Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. Sorry we're missing our usual opening uh, video, but since we're doing this from home, we're a little short on all our technical wizardry. I'm missing you too, Ann, but it's nice to see you. And you, Andy. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm holding up. Um, you know, I think it's a great privilege to be able to stay home alone. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I uh, agree. Anyway, well, look, uh, lots of news to cover this week on Gay USA. Uh, this week, we lost Phyllis Lyon, uh, a uh, mother of the U.S. lesbian movement in the 1950s. She has died at the age of 95. And this week, some of us were in Central Park challenging Franklin Graham's uh, operation of his Samaritan's Purse medical tents. He's quite the bigot, and his presence there in Central Park has become quite controversial. It's a provocation. Uh, COVID-19 has claimed the lives of people in the community. Robbie Brown, Dr. Frank Gabrin, and Kim Wetzel of the Sirens Motorcycle Club. Virginia's Governor Ralph Northam signed the statewide LGBT rights bill this week. That is the first state in the South to have such a bill. Wisconsin voters braved death to rid the state of an anti-LGBT judge. And Georgia police, not having enough to do in the pandemic evidently, uh, abused Grinder to arrest gay men on trumped up charges. And if you're running out of things to watch on TV, Chris Cooper, our faithful movie correspondent, has three recommendations that we'll try to make at the end of the show. But they're all on Netflix, so you, you have to sign up for that. Okay. Uh, but we start with a uh, death and the celebration of the life of a real giant in our movement, not coronavirus related, but just uh, 95 years old. Phyllis Lyon was one of the founding mothers of the modern movement, uh, starting in, I would say, the 1950s. 19, the Daughters of Belitis, which was their group, was founded by her and her partner, uh, Del Martin. They'd been partners since 1950. And they formed this group with three other lesbian couples in 1955. Uh, I hope we have the picture up of them. We do have. We do. I can't see the pictures. You can. We do. Have. Uh, they they were amazing. They were involved in everything. So they start the Daughters of Belitis, which is uh, just one of the first uh, lesbian groups to exist. And then the picture is up of the ladder, which is this uh, the first lesbian periodical in 1956, which was quite a radical thing to do in those days. It was published until 1972 and published Lorraine Hansberry and others, uh, uh, an amazing collection of people they published. And yes, lasted for quite a while. They, they went on to write a book uh, called Lesbian Woman, Lesbian Slash Woman, which was uh, the first book of its kind. It covered uh, politics and religion, uh, criminal justice, employment, housing, health, aging, and they were involved in all those issues right, all right. the way along the way. They just had an appetite for everything, and they were everywhere. Well, and of course, of course. Of course. a journalist, now going back to the last picture, uh, the group, Daughters of Belitis, uh, fostered socialization as well as advocacy. The, here they are having breakfast in San Francisco in 1959, and that's Dell, Josie, Jan, Marge, Bev Hickok, and Phyllis. They were trailblazers all. They just, I mean, it was a radical thing just to get together and affirm each other. Yes. Well, they spontaneously decided that they needed to have a group to talk to each other, and so they went ahead and did it. And that's what I love about activists. They don't sit around and wait for someone else to do it. They go ahead and do what needs to be done. Uh, they, yes, they stayed activists all their lives. Uh, uh, Phyllis was very involved with political clubs, the Alice B. Toklas Club, uh, which was the LGBT Democratic Club, which backed Nancy Pelosi in 1987, rather controversially, but of course, Nancy seems to have worked out. Um, they were also the first same-sex couple to marry legally in California in 2008, with Gavin Newsom presiding. 
And now, that was really because they were known as such leaders and such an important couple. And so they were recruited to be the first married couple. They were not great fans of marriage. They had not felt compelled to do it. But when they were asked to be the first couple, because they were so symbolic and so important, they said, ah, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's a, that was in 2008. Adele died later that year at the age of 89. They were brave visionaries. They, they really made the world safer for everybody who was different. Uh, and in fact, they were actually the first couple married in 2004 by Gavin Newsom when he was doing those sort of rogue weddings. <laughs> yes. And then when uh, marriage became legal in California, they were again the first couple to be married in 2008. There are, uh, there's a wonderful documentary about them called No Secret Anymore, The Times of Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon. If, I don't know if it's available on YouTube or what, but if you can get your hands on No Secret Anymore, that's a terrific documentary about them and about the whole movement they were part of. And of course, the Lyon Martin Community Clinic in San Francisco is named for them. And they played major roles in decriminalizing homosexuality in California and passing non-discrimination laws in San Francisco and California. And you know, what Kate Kendall said about them, he, she was a close friend. And she said Phyllis did slip into dementia in recent years, but never lost her sense of humor, never failed to love good food, never stopped missing Dell, and had committed caregivers who were able to stay with her so that she could stay in her home right above the Castro there, especially lesbian actress, activist Pan Haskins. Uh, Speaker Pelosi sent a House proclamation on her 95th birthday, and it moved uh, Phyllis deeply. She was also co-founder of the National Sex Forum and director of that for 19 years. Yep. And a professor at the Institute for Advanced Study of Human Sexuality, an innovator in sex education. Uh, and then late in life, she joined Old Lesbians Organizing for Change. Uh, and they were both delegates to the White House Conference on Aging. There is also a wonderful book by Marcy Gallo, G-A-L-L-O, called Different Daughters, A History of the Daughters of Belitis and the Rise of the Lesbian Rights Movement. Terrific book. So if you are looking to read up on this, get Marcy Gallo's book, Different Daughters. All right, and what'd you do this week? <laughs> oh my God, I'm still so exhausted. I rode my bike five miles uptown with not enough air in the tires, and I felt I was uh, pulling uh, uh, the entire apartment building with me. But all that was in service of a demonstration in Central Park against Franklin Graham and his Samaritan's Purse medical operation that he has set up in Central Park. And now, what we have on the screen now is a picture of Franklin Graham having a nationally televised Easter service, televised by Fox News and his father's friend, Rupert Murdoch, uh, right there in Central Park, commandeering the park up there on the East Meadow uh, with their tents in the background, because what this is, is just a fundraising uh, thing for them. Fundraising. Fundraising and proselytizing. Uh, you know, we had debates within Reclaim Pride Coalition, which is my group I'm a member of that did the demonstration, more about that in a minute, about uh, how this would be received by people. Because there are people who say, look, we're in the middle of a pandemic. They're coming to provide medical aid. It, that now is not the time to go after them for their bigotry. But the fact is that now is the time to go after them because they are opportunistically taking advantage of this absolute disaster to advertise themselves and their right-wing religious ideology. Uh, so we're still trying to figure out exactly how they got there. Did Pence send them? Uh, why did the state and the city and Mount Sinai Hospital pair, pair up with them to do this? There is a strong suspicion that uh, Mount Sinai, Cuomo, and de Blasio acceded to this to please Trump in order just to get the things they were trying to get out of the federal government. Exactly. Uh, for protection, medical equipment, research money. Now, somebody's going to reveal this down the road, because why else would you pick this group, given all the groups that could have run a field hospital? So, well, and given that, shall we uh, perform our little joke on that? Yes, why didn't they ask the Ku Klux Klan? And I, I mean that sincerely. I mean, they believe a lot of this Franklin Graham does. 
and they have the masks and the gowns. Oh, you stepped on my line. You stole my line. You said the gowns. I said the masks. Uh, nevertheless, uh, so all this came to a head when a guy named James Finn in Michigan wrote a post on Medium, an online uh, publication, telling the story of how he had tried to volunteer with the group to work in Central Park. And what happened was that they were enthusiastic about his application, but then they get to the part of the application where they ask you to sign on in support of Franklin Graham's Statement of Faith. And the Statement of Faith says, you know, we believe in giving our lives to Jesus, and we do not believe in same-sex marriage. We believe sex is only for marriage between a genetic man and a genetic woman. It also condemns abortion, and it goes on and on with its really evangelical Christianity. So James Finn says to them, well, you know, I really want to come work with you. I think you're doing great work. I'd love to join you, but I, I can't sign on to this statement of faith. It's against everything I believe. And they just said, no, you are not invited. We take it back. We don't want you. Go away. Well, talk about what happened at the at the press conference and the sort of the protest there, because we haven't put the pictures up yet. Let's start. Oh, we're getting, uh, give me one second okay. to get to that. Uh, so when we saw this, we said, oh, my God, we can't let this go unanswered. We have to do something about this. And then one, we found that one of our own members, Timothy Lunsford Stevens, had similarly volunteered to work with the group and had similarly run up against this statement of faith. So reporters have asked Franklin Graham about this and said, surely you did not mean to uh, exclude volunteers by making them sign this statement of faith. And here's what he told the Charlotte Observer. All of our doctors and nurses and staff, they're Christians. We believe it's very important that as we serve people and help people, we do it in Jesus' name. Uh, of course, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. That's part of who we are. I don't want a person who's going to be on the job and drinks. That's not a good witness. I don't want a person who's going to be using drugs to be part of our team. I don't want someone who's going to be swearing to be part of our team. I don't want someone who is trying to pick up girls and using this as an opportunity to do those kinds of things. So we try to screen the people that work with us. And we want men and women who believe the way we do and have the same core values that we have. Yes, and we don't want bigots uh, serving us in New York. And, you know, he's whining now about uh, being criticized and distracted from his mission, which is raising money. That's his mission. Well, I am thrilled to see that not only did Reclaim Pride protest him and, and thrilled to see that he complained about us by name. Thank you for that advertisement. But also Congressman Jerry Nadler, Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and other members of Congress wrote a letter complaining about his uh, values and ethics. And uh, of course, the governor and mayor on Mount Sinai made him sign a, a pledge that he would not discriminate in provision of services, but that has nothing to do with the people he's excluding from working with him. All right, so now we go to the pictures. Uh, let's right. see. So we go up to Central Park yesterday and hold a demonstration, hold a press conference, really, to uh, publicize all of this. Uh, we got very good coverage, and uh, we did not ca call for a big demonstration because we're practicing safe distancing. And, uh, and so we adhered to that. But we had uh, about a dozen of us with signs and speakers. And who we got up there? We got Tim, Tim up there. Tim Lunsford uh, speaking. He's the guy who applied to work there, and they said no. Right. He filed a, he filed a complaint at the commission. And then Jay Walker. The Human who, Rights Commission. Yes. yes. And then Jay Walker, who was terrific uh, there from Reclaim Pride speaking. And well, then, he used our Ku Klux Klan line, and he quoted a couple of other people, Dr. Stephen Thrasher and uh, Greg Gonzalez, longtime AIDS activist now at Yale, who had given us statements. Now, uh, there's a guy, another guy with a mask here with a sign that says, do no harm, Graham's greed equals $22 million, which is his net worth. Some, some Jesus follower. That is Jamie Leo of ACT UP, longtime uh, AIDS activist and great guy. 
And then there's uh, uh, Paul Nocera holding the Reclaim Pride sign. And then there are the folks in the background with a banner that says, hate won't heal. And again, you don't want to be surrounded by these people. And then there are our friends, Glenn and Mark, uh, Glenn holding a sign that says, New York City in crisis. This is not a fundraising, proselytizing, or media exposure opportunity. And Mark's sign says, Mount Sinai Hospital, a Jewish hospital, by the way, and these guys are Jewish, legitimizes discrimination, bigotry, and dubious medicine. It, it's, you know, Franklin Graham is there. He, he, Andy, you saw the footage of him in the tents doing an ad to raise money that he's running on CNN now. Right. Uh, and he is uh, staff uh, hold hands and pray over people in these tents, which if you're Jewish or Muslim, which he also hates, uh, may it not be. Kill you. Hmm? It'll kill you. Yeah, well, well, I mean, it would. It's very uncomfortable. Now, I have to say that one of the things that uh, moved me was when I first arrived, one of my jobs there was to be the police negotiator because I've done that for so many years. And we had gotten a call early in the morning from the police saying, uh, well, are you going to be doing civil disobedience? Are you going to attack the tents? No, we're going to hold a press conference. We're not crazy or stupid. Excuse me. Uh, the nature attacked the tents. There was quite the windstorm. Yes, but the there was a contingent of police there to just keep an eye on everything. They were perfectly cooperative with us. But I went over to them when I first got there because I was supposed to, you know, make contact with them. And I just found myself saying, uh, before we talk about any of this, I have to say to you, we are well aware of what you have suffered in this disaster. Uh, scores of police officers have become infected and many have died. And the tragedy of this pandemic hitting the people who are still out there working, whether it is doctors and nurses who are getting sick and dying, or police officers or grocery delivery people or people working in the grocery stores or any of these kinds of people who are still out there forced to do this work because things have to work in this city. It's just heartbreaking to know what they're going through. And I was uh, really sincerely moved by seeing the police there and being able to say that to them. And they were very appreciative of that. And, uh, and we had an absolutely fine event with no problems. And I am really happy to have raised these issues because uh, that was exactly what we were there to do. And Rise and, Rise and Resist was there uh, today holding their own demonstration there. So it continues. Lots, lots of good stories. Uh, I'll put a link in our email to the one from AM New York, maybe, because that had a lot of pictures. and was That was really good, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, we did have a semi-victory this week because St. John the Divine Cathedral bowed out of working with them. They kind of finessed it. They said, well... And they'd already set up beds and banners, in uh, floor banners, in the cathedral with Samaritan's Purse, because this is a fundraising operation. Yeah. And uh, they said, well, we, we, we really, we, now we don't really need them. We think it's leveling off here, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, but in the meantime, the Central Synagogue endorsed the collaboration with Terrible. Graham, which is just disgusting. Uh, and there were news reports that uh, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine ended that not just because they didn't need it, but because uh, staff members at the cathedral were not comfortable working with Samaritan's Purse, and they objected. And I think that had a lot to do with that collaboration not going forward. I'm really sorry to hear about the synagogue uh, paddling up with them. Right. Uh, can, uh, a couple of other sort of religious notes. Jerry Falwell Jr. is now a class action suit against him by Liberty University students over the COVID response. He won't return tuition funds, and he's keeping the university technically open, even though classes aren't being held other than online, so that he can keep all the money. And of course, they also think he made a lot of them sick by calling them back into the school. Of course. Hey. And, and he wants to uh, have the New York Times and ProPublica reporters arrested for stories they did on the Liberty U students and uh, being forced to come back early to the school. He wants them uh, prosecuted for trespassing at Liberty University in doing their stories. I don't think he's going to get anywhere with that. 
some of these churches are insisting on community spread, gathering people together, a few. And uh, Governor, Democratic Governor Bashir in Kentucky said, we're going to record the license plates if you go in there to a group gathering, and then we're going to send you a notice that you are under quarantine for 14 days if you decide to do this. He's not fooling around. He said the test of faith is whether you're willing to sacrifice to protect other people. Okay, and then another religious story. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to gloat. This evangelical pastor who insisted on continuing services in Richmond, Virginia, Bishop Gerald O. Glenn, <clears throat> He's now dead of the virus and his wife has it. He had said, I firmly believe God is larger than this virus and insisted that he was an essential worker. His daughter is now urging everyone to stay home. Uh, I think that's the kind of thing that the bishop was exemplifying religion as a mental illness, if that's the way you operate. And in uh, Davie, Florida, we told you last week about the deputy sheriff, Shannon Bennett, who died of the uh, virus. Well, some of the, uh, the police officers in Davie, Florida, in that part of the state, uh, went to their police chief and started asking questions and saying, you know, is it really safe for us to work? What's going on here? And he marched them out to the parking lot, made them stand in formation as if they were school children, they said, and then lectured them about how Shannon Bennett died because he was a homosexual who had attended homosexual events, and therefore they were not at risk for this virus. It was so vile that everybody blew the whistle on this guy, and he has now been put on administrative leave for saying something so disgusting. Well, at least they put him on administrative leave while we're welcoming Franklin Graham here in New York. Uh, we can repeat those comparisons as we go along. Yeah. Uh, I was also disgusted by uh, Trump promising to analyze the racial disparities in the effect of this virus. It doesn't make sense he said, and I don't like it. No, I look, I have a friend in, you know, in the heart of Brooklyn there, African-American woman, and, you know, I know some people who've died, including in my building, but she says she has a lot of friends who are dying of this. Well, look, when you, when you have poor populations who are, number one, still working in these dangerous jobs, uh, crowded together more than in wealthier parts of the city, having uh, health problems that are exacerbated by their poverty uh, and put them at more risk for this. Uh, it just goes on and on. And of course they are at more risk. And of course they would be uh, suffering the effects of this virus more than uh, white rich people. And what did uh, So they are not able to isolate in the same way. They're not going to their Hamptons houses. They're, uh, they're, they're vulnerable, and but Trump, Trump can't understand it. And what did Trump do on Easter Sunday? He watched the service of Robert Jeffress, his pastor, uh, who believes that the Catholic Church was created by Satan and that 9-11 was punishment for abortion. Mm. All right, should we talk about some of the people we lost in the community this week? Yes, okay. my good friend, Robbie Brown. Oh, talk, talk about that. Uh, I, Robbie was a real estate broker in New York City. I knew him for 35 years. Uh, we worked together, 30 years, we worked together on the gay games that were here in New York City in the 90s. Uh, we were on the board together. He was one of the nicest guys in the world. So fun and charitable and welcoming, friendly to everyone. His, he was one of the top real estate brokers in New York, and his business card had his information on one side, and then on the other side, uh, depending on which card you got, different pictures of him in drag, one as Hillary Clinton, uh, and <laughs> Other, other pictures of him in drag. He was, you know, we talk about the community coming together in the AIDS epidemic, but really the people who had money were not all making the contributions they could have made. Robbie was just the most giving person then and long after. He still ran an annual Toys for Tots fundraiser. He uh, gave to 
uh, along with the gay games, uh, uh, he, GMHC, Glad, God's Love We Deliver, Act Up, Sage, he, he was always available. When I would contact him and say, look, I have a friend who's doing a film project. Can you kick in something? Immediately wrote a check and sent it out. He was a participant in the gay games he, as a diver, and he was friendly with Greg Luganus. He was the worst diver. <laughs> he was terrible. But he got up there and participated. Uh, he used to ride his bike around town to uh, go from, you know, apartment to apartment. I'm told that he was showing apartments as recently as a couple of weeks ago, which was not a great idea. I don't know if that's how he became infected, but uh, he just would not stop and would not slow down. Uh, he also, he, as a real estate broker, he, of course, moved around a lot in town and bought and sold apartments, but he had a place uh, at one point in uh, the, uh, the building, uh, I don't know if it's the Century Building or another one of those buildings on Central Park West, a building with a main uh, bottom and then two towers. And his apartment was right on the base of one of the towers, so he, it had some outdoor space right outside there. He put in an outdoor shower <laughs> with the entire tower above him, of course. Uh, he just was a wonderful, lovely guy, and it, I'm so sorry to have lost him. He had some cancer battles in the last few years, so that made him more vulnerable to this, too. And I'm just very sad about losing Robbie. Okay. Uh, I hope my director can still see me. I'm seeing funny things on the screen here. Uh, maybe, maybe. I can see you. You can see me? All right. Yeah. Uh, I hope still looking good, Andy. Okay, because uh, I'm seeing different things on the screen here. Uh, I'm not seeing Anne. But anyway, I want to talk about Dr. Frank Gabrin, uh, G-A-B-R-I-N. We talked about him briefly last week. He was the first emergency room doctor to die of COVID uh, and here, and he warned of the lack of protection equipment and um, Re having to reuse personal protection equipment. He was 60 years old and died. Uh, he was adored by his colleagues. He had survived testicular cancer. He um, twice. He was once assaulted in the emergency room at one point years ago, and he wrote a book about overcoming burnout in the emergency room and feeling greater compassion for your patients. Now, he connected with his partner, who we showed on the screen, Angel Vargas, uh, who, who helped him become his true self. And Vargas said that Gabrin taught him how beautiful life can be. They married in August. Uh, they served St. John's Episcopal in Queens, a hot spot, largely black and Latinx people, and an East Orange general in New Jersey, largely African-American. And he said he got infected using the same mask four days in a row. His middle name was Pincus, uh, which is a biblical fi figure who halted a plague. But in this case, it's just so, so, I mean, so all this crap you hear about everybody's got everything they need is a lie. And it's got to be shouted from the rooftops. Anne, still there? Have we lost you? We also lost Kim West. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I can see me on the screen. Uh, we lost. Kim Wetzel of the Sirens Motorcycle Club in New York. And a friend of hers, describing herself as a sister in uh, you know, affection, wrote a very affectionate portrait of her for the Daily News here in New York and blasted Trump. Yeah. Uh, the article described Kim as sparkly, goofy, and adorable. She's second from left in the picture. <laughs> Not goofy in that, that picture, but uh, uh, she liked to knit. She liked puns. She was a photographer, very beloved within the Sirens Motorcycle Club, who are an important part of the community here and lead the Pride Parade every year. She so died. Kim Wetzel, a big loss. She died 26 hours after being taken away in an ambulance, and she was still awaiting an ICU bed when she died. And uh, Cheryl Stewart, who wrote that article, accused Trump of, oh, you know, it's obvious, it's, he's guilty, negligence, incompetence, and venality, and taking no responsibility. And um, 
some other angles. And of, as we go through the... Go ahead. I can't hear you. Uh, can I uh, interrupt you for a second? I just, I am struck as we go through these uh, losses that we really aren't taking to days. The losses are being so fast and furious. We are so furious about the politics of this. Uh, it is such an overwhelming disaster that I think we have not paused and taken a breath to really absorb the impact of the loss that we are suffering. And so I just want to urge you to do that and not to race through this too fast because these are real serious losses of each and every individual. Absolutely no question. I mean, you know, they were gonna they were gonna do a mounting of the Names Project AIDS quilt out there uh, in the Bay Area uh, in April at the National AIDS Memorial, but uh, obviously on hold because of COVID. So masks are now being sewn out of leftover fabric. Imagine what Gilbert Baker could be doing right now in terms of sewing. Yeah. He was around, and of course. They uh, They've canceled the uh, Pride March in San Francisco in June, as expected, and they've joined the virtual global Pride on Saturday, June 27th. Yeah. We still haven't heard a decision. They keep saying they're waiting to see. Not here. Uh, we'll keep you informed as we know more about that. Okay. All right. Uh, I, read story, I, read a I read a horrible story in Hawaii, by the way. Landlords are preying on women unable to pay the rent, demanding sexual favors in exchange for rent. Now, of course, these wow. things can be investigated. Uh, it is estimated that 31 percent of U.S. renters are unable to make the were unable to make the rent on April 1st. Uh, in the UK, uh, an LGBT homeless youth charity is warning uh, uh, young people about coming out while sheltering with their parents, because now, of course, families are often forced to live together and stay together, and uh, that's leading to more domestic violence among uh, couples and uh, youth are at risk in those situations if they have no place to go. So uh, keep your own safety uppermost in your mind, both uh, physically, mentally, in all ways. Uh, in Chicago, uh, the out lesbian mayor there, Lori Lightfoot, is being uh, heralded for her aggressive approach to COVID, sparking some memes like uh, we do have a picture of one, placing her in Georges Seurat's uh, Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte. <laughs> uh, it, it hangs in the Art Institute of I'm Chicago. I'm not quite sure why that is an appropriate meme. Why what? Uh, why is that a relevant image is my question. A, a distancing? It's a, it's a park. Yes, it's a park. And she goes out to the parks and she, she has stopped people in the parks and said, you got to protect yourselves. Uh, she says, if I have to drive around and check on people uh, being in compliance, I'm happy to do it. She broke up an underage drinking party. I mean, she's just out there personally trying to get everybody on board with what they need to do. And you do go to the parks and you do see people sort of drifting together in, in, in some places, especially young people. I saw it yesterday in Central Park and I was a little appalled. And as we were holding our press conference, some woman came walking through and she started objecting to a couple of people being too close together, which they really weren't, but that was her line. And I said to her, uh, well, you might want to consider wearing a mask, which she was <laughs> not. And she said, oh, they don't work. And I, just, I didn't want to get in a fight with her, but uh, I found that a little appalling. Right. We were all wearing masks. In better news, you know, where a lot of businesses are closing and bookstores don't last very long in good times these days, but the legendary City Lights bookstore founded by poet Lawrence Ferlinghetti in 1953, he's still around at 101. It was in danger of closing. They raised $450,000 in a GoFundMe campaign to keep paying salaries of 20 employees. Uh, housing Works in New York, 
with the version of Callan Lord uh, Health Center is opening a shelter for homeless people with COVID, with the virus, to provide shelter and food, medical help, uh, laundry services, social services. You know, Housing Works is the one that came out of ACT UP and provided uh, housing for homeless people with HIV and some of whom were still using uh, drugs and they would have been rejected by any other city shelter because they were using drugs. But Housing Works and a harm reduction program took them in and still is. And now they're taking in people with COVID and housing them appropriately in a shelter right. uh, well, when other places will not. And of course, they believe in harm reduction and Trump believes in harm amplification, still trying to kill us, no national lockdown, and yet he's talking about opening things up, no nationalization of medical or food supplies, uh, you know, uh, just commercials for corporations who he thinks are going to get us out of this, which they're not. I mean, when I see food rotting in the fields and then I see people don't have enough to eat yeah. all over the country, that has to be done by the military. Uh, but he's just, and of course now, you know, pe pe everybody's talking about the fact that he, you know, he's going to defund the World Health Organization. Well, that money came from Congress. He might be able to do it temporarily, but within 45 days, if Congress doesn't say, that's okay, it, the money is supposed to come back to the WHO. Um, reporters are taking him on, but I think we're like lambs to slaughter. But it was nice to see uh, Fauci, and I'm not always crazy about the way Fauci talks, but when he was reflecting in front of my, uh, Mike Pence while discussing COVID, um, the hit on communities of color, he talked about the incredible courage and dignity and strength of the gay community during the AIDS crisis. Despite extraordinary stigma, particularly against the gay community, I think that really changed some stigma against the gay community. The New York Times, probably this Sunday in its T magazine, will have a feature on ACT UP, a picture of 98 of us who gathered a few weeks ago, and a piece by David France. It's a very good piece, but it's all about how ACT UP uh, changed protests uh, in the world and for various groups. And I have to say, I was a little appalled that it totally ignored the fact that ACT UP stands on the shoulders of uh, the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement, the environmental movement, the women's movement, and a million other movements throughout history. Uh, so to pretend that ACT UP invented this, I think, is absolutely uh, outrageous. So Not just you can up. read about what we did, but please don't, don't think that we invented it. The whole LGBT movement grew out of the women's movement and the civil rights. All of those. And, and we were all together in that room, too. Right. All right. We told you last week that Outright International was going to uh, do a website with stories of uh, LGBT people around the world and, and their experiences in this uh, disaster. They have now also announced they're raising funds to fund uh, local groups around the world, international organizations working with LGBT people uh, and the virus. So check out Outright Action International if you're interested in that. And uh, a little uh, in the somewhat the same vein, but a little more scary, Gilead Pharmaceutical Company has announced that they're going to give an extra $20 million to uh, nonprofits that they currently fund, and a million dollars each to uh, San Mateo, California, and LA, where they have headquarters. I'm, not, uh, <laughs> I'm not willing to give them a, an enormous amount of credit. Uh, and then questions are being raised about the new blood donation rules. Are they really in effect? Now, they were just announced, so I recognize it may take a little time to get up to speed. But one of our viewers who went to donate blood was given the same old questions about, uh, you know, 12 months of non-men who have sex with men sex. Uh, we got to get people up to speed on that. Okay, we're down to about our last 18 and a half minutes. Uh, let's reflect for a second on the political developments this week. Sure. You had, you had, Go ahead. You had Bernie Sanders endorsing Biden. And Bernie is also making a renewed push for Medicare for all in the pandemic, which would be something obvious at this point. Uh, then Barack Obama endorses Bernie. Uh, 
by the way, uh, Biden apparently we missed this. He, he t- did we say he told CBS in Houston that he already has told Pete Buttigieg that he'll have a j- job in the Biden administration. Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, and then Warren endorsed Biden, and I I think that and uh, you know Barack Obama made some nice remarks about Warren. I think they're positioning her for vice president. Not I'm not saying that's my choice. I'm saying it looks like it's happening, but who knows. Uh, I think it, I think it would really be a, a bad decision not to put a woman of color on the ticket when you are are the nominee for president because black people came out to vote for you in South Carolina and then you waltz off and uh, put another white person on the ticket. I think that is just uh, appalling. Well, and I'm just telling I don't you know how you. I'm reading the tea leaves based on what I understand. I'm giving my opinion, which is that I think it's an inappropriate thing to do. I'm a big Stacey Abrams fan, but, you know, there are any number of other proper Uh, candidates. All right. Uh, There was a a poll that came out this week. Big poll. We'll put it in our email uh, from the American Values Atlas that 72% of Americans now support non-discrimination protections. Well, they have for a long time, but it's been pretty high. We don't get a federal LGBT rights bill because Republicans are in control in the Senate. Um, but there were some interesting things in the poll that said LGBTQ people are twice as likely uh, not to be affiliated with religion than non-LGBTQ people. We're more likely to be lower income and more likely to live in the South and West. Yeah, the, uh, the Williams Institute has been finding those facts for some years. Uh, most of the people, well, the, uh, the highest number of same-sex couples with children are in the South. Right. South. We need to move along. Uh, we, uh, lost, we, lost a, we, we lost a pioneer in Queens County, New York, and yep. Russian. the president of PFLAG Queens there has died at 88. She dedicated 25 years of her life to providing emotional support and uh, other resources to family members of LGBTQ people. Uh, back in the day in Queens, when the atmosphere out there was pretty tough, council member Danny Drum said she was a model activist and like a family to me. And let's run through some political news around the country. Uh, In Virginia, uh, Ralph Northam, the governor, the Democratic governor, signed the uh, LGBT non-discrimination bill, adding it to the uh, law in Virginia. It is the first state in the South, and I think this is mind-blowing, to have a full non-discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity bill. Well, let me stop you for a second, because reading it over, this only covers public employment, housing, and credit. Uh, It does not cover all employment. Really? Yes, Ann. Okay. It goes into effect July 1st, along with the new gun control law and the decriminalization of marijuana. Well, I'm disappointed that it's only... Me too. In Wisconsin, uh, you know, Republican... In Wisconsin... You going ahead? No, you. All right. In Wisconsin, Republicans murderously forced elect- an election last Tuesday, despite the Democratic governor, Evers, attempt to delay it, backed up by the courts, right up to the Supreme Court. But this effort at voter suppression, making people risk their lives to vote, failed. Democrats picked up a state Supreme Court seat. Jill Karofsky defeated the conservative Daniel Kelly. Now, Republicans still hold a 4-3 majority there. And um, uh, the uh, all, by the way, New York has finally moved to, uh, you know, everybody wants to vote by mail can vote by mail on our primary and election. Yes. Go ahead. Hello. Are you there? Maybe I need to talk. Um, all right. Uh, did we lose him? All right. This constant vote is so important is that, uh, on the docket in Wisconsin is an not hearing you. Oh, there we are. Uh, can you hear me, Andy? I, uh, now I can. Andy, can you? Okay. Uh, and I can see you now bigger, too. Uh, the Wisconsin is uh, considering a uh, move to purge the voter rolls of tens of thousands of people in this state's court is going to vote on that. 
So it was important we get another judge, but we're still in the minority, four to three, so I don't know whether we'll be able to prevent it. But what happened in Wisconsin is fulfilling what I hope will happen in November. My image, my thought of the only way we're going to beat Trump is that millions of people are sitting at home just waiting for voting to happen so they can go out and defeat Trump. And this allows what people yeah, you're breaking would up go here. out in the middle of the pandemic in spite of having live graph that ballots that didn't arrive it is just unbelievably good. Okay. In Florida, an appellate court ruled that the security firm that employed the mass killer at the Pulse Massacre can't be held liable for failing to investigate all the complaints against him and training him in firearms and allowing him to possess a gun. Uh, it was a lawsuit brought by the families, and it, the, the court said they went too far. Okay. By the way, in Wisconsin, we elected the first out member of the Milwaukee Common Council, Joe Casca Zamaripa, who had been in the assembly. Uh, so, there. Yeah. Okay. In Georgia, uh, in Dawson County, uh, the police are using... We're not, I think we're not hearing each other. Go ahead. Maybe not. Uh, well, I can hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Go ahead. Uh, in Tallahassee, Florida, they adopted a comprehensive no conversion therapy bill that covers both minors and adults. Go. In Georgia, in Dawson County, uh, outside of Atlanta, police are using Grinder to conduct... Um, Bogus sting operations on gay men. They arrested nine last month, accused them of offering drugs for sex to an undercover cop. Even though the screenshots of the conversations do not support the allegations, they arrested men 23 to 50. It was published in the local newspaper, the names and mugshots. Lambda called it a cataclysmic failure and are fighting the charges. Washington State, Anne? The ACLU and a Northwest, <laughs> are you hearing me at all? I hear you. Andy, are you hearing me? I hear you. Is anybody hearing? Okay. I can hear you. If you can hear Idaho. me. In Idaho. In uh, Idaho. Rich, how are we doing? You're breaking up a little, but go ahead. I'm hearing you right now. Okay. In Idaho, the ACLU and a Northwestern women's legal group called Legal Voice are suing the state of Idaho over the recently passed bill that forbids trans athletes, female trans athletes, from participating in high school or college sports. They've got a couple of plaintiffs, one from Boise State University, one from Boise High School, uh, and they're going after this law, which is the worst in the nation. Okay. In Washington State, Governor Inslee appointed a blackout uh, judge uh, to the state Supreme Court, and uh, Pierce County Superior Court Judge Helen Whitener. Uh, she has to run in November to hold on to her seat. Um, she went to Baruch College here in New York. Yep, she's from Trinidad originally. Yep. Uh, in international news, in Poland, uh, <laughs> amendments to the law there are increasing prison penalties for exposing anyone to HIV. It's always nice to take advantage of an epidemic to increase penalties against people for all sorts of things. In, in Ireland, we told you that the Taoiseach, the Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, out gay, activated his medical license to fight COVID at least once a week, uh, besides his uh, duties. Uh, and he's getting high marks for his response to the crisis. Uh, and it turns out his partner, Matthew Barrett, and as well as his sisters and their husbands are all employed in healthcare. And it's kind of gone so well for him, even though he was seen to be finished politically after the election, that uh, he, he might now serve in a unity government. In Indonesia? In Reading, I'm not hearing you. Last Chick Fil A closed in England. Uh, Rich, are you hearing me? On and off, but go ahead. I am hearing you now. Okay. 
Uh, the landlord did not renew the lease of the last Chick-fil-A. Uh, they are still making donations to anti-LGBT groups, so now they're gone from England. In Indonesia, the police will not bring murder charges in the case of a trans woman who was burned to death. Two suspects doused her with gasoline and set her on fire. The police say the fire was not intentional. The suspects accused the woman of stealing from, from them. They doused her, and one of them lit a match, but the police said he didn't intend to burn her, but they still could be charged with physical violence. I, all I have left after Chris Cooper's uh, movie reviews, so if you have more, go ahead. No, well, besides the reviews, um, uh, um, Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time across the country on broadwaycares.com, on YouTube, everything is going to run their Disney Spectacular. They finally made a deal with all the unions, so that's going to be on 7 o'clock Friday Eastern. Go to broadwaycares.com or on to YouTube. On Hulu, there's a new show called Little Fires Everywhere that has a groundbreaking black LGBTQ storyline. Uh, but let's talk about Chris Cooper. Chris, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm picking up. You go through them. Uh, Chris, Chris has three movie recommendations for, the, for those of you stuck at home uh, on Netflix um, that many of many of which may not have been seen by Gay USA viewers. The first one is a great Bollywood film called Lagan. Filled with song and dance, colonial-era Indians triumphing over British oppression and one of the most gripping sports climaxes of all time. The drawback, he says, is it's nearly four hours long. The advantage is it's nearly four hours long, a great way to kill time on <laughs> lockdown. And you get to linger over handsome Bollywood star Amir Khan the whole time. Uh, the others? Yes. Uh, tra train to Busan. No better metaphor for viral contagion than a zombie plague in this horror film from South Korea delivers it with nonstop action and crazily inventive nail-biting life or walking death situations. In this movie, you'll also find echoes of the Korean class divisions that help Parasite win the Best Picture Oscar. And the last one he's recommending is one I've seen and I love, God's Own Country, gay-themed pick of the week. Northern England's own brand of Brokeback Mountain, and I think this was better, authentically depicting hard scrabble farm life in a hard land. Enter gorgeous Romanian immigrant farm worker Gheorghe, played by Alec uh, Secoreno, and Josh O'Connor, of course, is the farm, farm guy in Northern England. And of course, he went on to play Prince, Prince Philip in The Crown. <laughs> Well, those sound like good recommendations. I'm still enjoying uh, My Brilliant Friend on HBO. If, uh, once again, if you haven't seen it, start with season one and uh, go straight through. We're halfway through season two. I'm not so much enjoying the plot against America. I think it was kind of stiff. It got a little better this week, but it's the fifth out of sixth episode, so I'm not sure that was ever worth it. I agree. It was nice to see Shep in it, but it's <laughs> for two seconds. But it's it's um, yeah, it's not. I mean, it's kind of just what you would expect, uh, which is you know, you, and you want more from from television. Yeah. Since especially since we're already living through a fascist takeover of America, so it doesn't have the same impact. Right. Uh, so what else are you up to these days, Andy? I hardly go out. I mean, I, tr I try to take a walk once in a while. I did on Easter Sunday and at night uh, just to stretch my legs and get out there. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's, um, I would say it's a blessing to be able to do this show because it gives us something to focus on and keep up with things and not just, we certainly convey a lot of COVID news, but, but also on everything else that's happening in the world. And of course, what's so appalling is all the other things that Trump is doing while, you know, he's not doing this right, but he's, he is effectively taking away environmental regulations, women's rights, uh, gay rights, everything, uh, while we're all, uh, you know, in quarantine. Are you there, Ann? by the fact that we don't have on the road or, or industry going, and yet he is going on and on and on, just 
continuing to destroy environmental regulations. Well, of course, what's, uh, you know, uh, as I said, I think, uh, you know, all these uh, bits of animal life are coming back. The air is getting cleaner. Maybe people will get used to that and want it all the time. And that will be a, a strike a push for more electric cars and uh, cleaner energy across the planet. I would like to think that we were going to reevaluate everything as we uh, go through this and I hope eventually pull out of it. I don't know whether we'll be out of it in a month or three years. But I look at history and I'm not optimistic about everything. Yeah. Well, um, uh, you know, people, well, look, we're all scared. Uh, people are getting their f final papers in order, which is a good thing to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just, this is an existential moment for the whole planet. Um, yes, and I'm not sure how well we're doing. I guess I'm in a uh, more negative mood this week. Sometimes I'm optimistic. Sometimes I think we're going to get through this and be fine and get back to uh, healthy, uh, productive lives. But sometimes I'm less, uh, I, you know, Trump is really just atrocious to listen to and watch. And it, Are you watching him now? A, oh, I've been watching him all along. He's the one thing I do watch. I can't watch the news coverage endlessly because that's really too depressing. But I watch Trump just because I find him mesmerizing in his insanity. I'm mesmerized by the reporters looking him straight in the eye and calling him a liar. Well, they do, but they don't call him out on things he promised, uh, you know, very recently. And I think they should be doing more follow-up on promises he's made. Well, saying, he's whatever happened to such and such. You say you don't watch the news as much, but that is, as soon as he finishes the press conferences, they run old clips of him promising all kinds of things and not doing them but I want them to confront him directly on those things. I want, that's the confrontation I want to see in those news conferences. And when he loses his mind and starts saying to people, if you don't shut up, I'm walking out on this. That is the kind of thing the American people need to see. Last 60 seconds. Okay, well maybe he'll pop a gasket. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, we are, we're so ha hampered by not having anybody at the helm. And of course, even your, even your uh, relief checks are being held up because he wants his name on them. He's not allowed mm -hmm. to sign them. So there's going to be a memo line that says, uh, brought to you by Donald J. Trump, a Donald J. Trump production. Uh, uh, I think it'll be his signature in the memo line. Uh, he can't sign them as the person signing the checks, but he can put his signature on there in the lower left instead of the lower right. You know, I didn't like Ronald Reagan, but he had a sign on his desk that said, there's no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. I didn't like Richard Nixon, but he invented the EPA. Uh, five seconds. Say goodnight. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hope to see you next week. <laughs>